Welcome to my YouTube channel, Journey of a Child of God. Please don't forget to subscribe. Jesus is the reason. Go out to the highway and edges and compel them to come in so that my house may be filled again. Jesus is the only reason. Psalms 63 O God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh long for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches, because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul Follow close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Hallelujah. This week, I will be looking at wilderness. I believe that every child of God goes through a period where they are in the wilderness. And I do believe that wilderness comes more than one time in your life. What is the wilderness? Wilderness is a place where it's difficult to live. It's an era of land that has not been farmed or has towns and roads built on it because it is difficult to live in as a result of its extremely cold or hot weather a bad hurt. Desert is a desert the land of the Bible is usually full of rocks, dried land. The wilderness is not the physical land that we will be going through, but we're going through a spiritual wilderness. So you can compare it with the natural land. What is a wilderness according to the natural land? It's dried. It's rocky. It's a place where you can't find food, where you don't see the natural things that we have here in our fruitful land believe that while we're going through the desert we learn not to drift from God but we learn more to cling to God while we're going through the wilderness in the wilderness I believe that we receive training we receive training and during that time we learn to submit to God we learn more how to be humble in the wilderness I believe that we encounter God for ourselves and in the wilderness truly we learn obedience and we learn trust. I cannot emphasize how we learn to trust with God because that time we our focus can't be on anything else only on God. The Bible is describing the wilderness. It says a land of a desert land of pits, land of drought, shadow of death, isolation, danger, divine deliverance, encounter. You encounter God in the wilderness. This dry place, you can only see God. In the desert, you find scorpions. In the desert, you find fiery serpents. We find drought, no water, a land where no one cross or where no one dwell 
no one dwell in the desert hallelujah no one dwell in the desert psalm 63 david wrote it he wrote it because he had a wilderness experience and because he had wilderness experience he can praise god who had brought him through his wilderness experience and i i don't want to say much but god word is perfect for us to understand that as a child of god we we're on a pathway we must understand that we're a citizen of heaven and as a citizen of heaven we are prone to go through a wilderness period but our uncle owes on god whatever situation we are going through we put our focus on god and with that focus we're able to trust him more right we, we do not cling we are not drifting away in our wilderness spirit we are looking to god we are clinging more to him this is when we know him for ourselves i want to look at three different persons in the bible who went through wilderness moses moses went into the wilderness david spent many time in the wilderness jesus spent a lot of time in the wilderness i want to start out with um the story of david david was a young shepherd boy david spent all his time in the wilderness the sheep were out there in the wilderness the sheep had to have somebody who, uh, who would attend to them they had to be a shepherd and i believe that god was grooming david from a young tender age the bible explained that when god sent samuel to the house of jesse to anoint david david was not in that house his brothers were there that even samuel were looking upon his brothers thinking assuming that was david because of how they looked david was nowhere there david was in the wilderness tending to the sheep the, the bible explained in samuel 17 verse 34 to 37 but david said to saul your serpent used to keep his father's sheep and when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock i went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth and when it arose against me i fought it by its beard and struck it and kill it your servant has killed both lion and bear and this uncircumcised philistine will be like one of them seeing he has defiled the army of god the army of the living god moreover david said the lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear he will deliver me from the hand of this philistine and saul said to david go and the lord be with you david had the strength because god taught him while he was in the wilderness tending to the sheep god taught him how to trust him so he had a trust in god because he said that god delivered him from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear he will deliver me from the hand of the philistine it was during david wilderness period that he learned to trust god he understood that that god whom protected him from the lion will also protect him also from everything david also destroyed goliath because he encountered a wilderness period where god prepped him 
where God taught him how to fight, how to stand up. He knew God preserved him. He had confidence in God. He learned to trust God because he what? He encountered God for himself. And because of that, David was able to de defeat the Philistine warrior, Goliath. Upon that, we encounter David in 1 Samuel 23, 13 to 29. I don't want to dwell too much on this reading. But this time, David was in a wilderness. And the word of God says from verse 14, And David stayed in stronghold in the wilderness and remained in the mountain in the wilderness of Zip. Saul sought him every day, but God did not deliver him into the into his hand. So David saw saw that Saul had come out to seek his life, and David was in the wilderness of Zip in a forest. Then Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David in the woods and strengthened his hand in God. And he said to him, Do not fear. For the end of Saul, my father, shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel, and I will be next to you. Even my father Saul knows that. So the two of them made a covenant before the Lord, and David stayed in the woods, and Jonathan went his way. God delivered David in this time. Saul was not able to touch david in this wilderness god preserved david verse 24 so they arose and went to zip before saul but david and his men were in the wilderness of ma'an in the plain of the south of Je jeshimwa when saul and his men went to seek him they told david therefore he went down to the rock and stayed in the wilderness of Maha. And when Saul heard that, he pursued David in the wilderness of Maha. Then Saul went on one side of the mountain and David and his men on the other side of the mountain. So David made haste to get away from Saul, for Saul and his men were encircling David and his men to take them. But a messenger, messenger came to Saul, saying, Hurry and come, for the Philistine of invade the land. Therefore Saul returned from pursuing David and went against the Philistine. So they called that place the Rock of Escape. Then David went up from, from there and dwelt in stronghold at ed Gide. Again, God preserved David in his wilderness period. Whatever wilderness time you are faced, God will deliver you. This is a time when you need to cling to God. This is a time when you need to pray more. This is a time you will encounter God for yourself while you're in your wilderness. Another person I want to look at is Moses. Moses' story is exceptional. But when you're born with a great destiny, your story will be exceptional. Moses was God's way to take the children of Israel out of bondage. Moses' story was not perfect. But Moses grew up in the Egyptian palace. He was considered to be an Egyptian. They grew him as they would grow their own child. Upon Moses discovering who he was, Moses had to go through the wilderness period because Moses' mind was all about Egypt. Remember, as a child of God, Egypt represents the world. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. So we encounter the system of this world. There is a system here. And God have to take us out of that system. So God 
allow some things to happen for Moses to move away. Moses traveled in that wilderness. I tried to, to, to study to see how far Moses walked in that desert to get to Midian. It was some time Moses had to walk in that desert. Moses had no food, nothing, but God kept him while he walked. He walked, he found favor when he found Jethro. Jethro allowed him to stay with him and tend to the flock. Jethro had a, a flock of sheep and Moses would now become the shepherd of these sheep. Moses spent time in the wilderness. I believe it was about 40 years that Moses spent in the wilderness trying to find God. God teaching him humility. In the wilderness, you will become what? Humble. You become humble. Look at what he was tending to. The sheep. The sheep. Taking care of the sheep. Hallelujah. God preserved him because God kept him the entire time in that wilderness. He learned to trust God and he encountered God. In Exodus 3, the Bible said, No Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Oreb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. More, moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I am sure I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmaster, for I know their sorrow. M Moses encountered God. Moses found God. M God spoke with Moses in the wilderness you all know the story i don't want to emphasize any further with the story what i want to show is the wilderness of it all moses took some time in the wilderness to overcome the lifestyle that he used to in egypt to overcome everything that had happened Glory be to God. Also, after the Lord used Moses to deliver the children of Israel from Egypt, God took them back into the wilderness. Moses had experienced a lifestyle in the wilderness. He knew it. But now he was not shepherding the sheep, but he was shepherding God's flock. So all that he learned when God was using him to shepherd the flock, the sheep. Now he was busy shepherding, shepherding the flock of God's people. Imagine your wilderness period is preparing you for the task that God truly has for you. Moses' wilderness period was preparing him for what God had intended to use him with the children of Israel. He learned obedience. He learned trust. 
he encountered God for himself. He learned God's laws and commandments. He had confidence in God. He built his faith. He built his trust. He learned to submit to God. He learned how to be humbled. The wilderness experience trained him to stand over God's people when it was time. God used him to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. While the children of Israel came out of Egypt, God bring them back into the wilderness to teach them how to trust him. Hallelujah. The next one I want to look at is Jesus. So I turn my Bible to Matthew 4 and I will read. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights after he was hungry, now when the temper came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angel charge over you, and in their hand they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written, Again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. This is extraordinary because this happened right in the time where John the Baptist um, came and he paved the way for Jesus. In Matthew 3, he said, For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John was preaching in the wilderness, here comes Jesus to be baptized. Jesus came and John baptized Jesus. After the baptism, the Spirit led him into the wilderness. Remember, Jesus is perfect, right? But Jesus came, he walked the pathway for man as an example to, to prepare the way, to make the path straight. Hallelujah. And he went into the wilderness. And if Jesus went into the wilderness, why will we not also go through the wilderness? After 40 days fasting in a time in the wilderness, this dragon tempt Jesus because he was led in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Hallelujah. So it was made clear that he went in the wilderness to be tempted so in the wilderness he learned obedience he was obedient to god the spirit led him god led him into the wilderness he was obedient he had to have trust in god to know that during this time in the wilderness he was on fasting 40 days 49 no food in the wilderness a wilderness is a dry land Jolt, jolt, right? Jolt, 
no water, no food, nothing. You're in. Imagine when you're just naturally fasting as a child of God. Think about when you don't eat, how your body feels. But just imagine you're not drinking any water. You go out there, the sun, is. you feel your mouth becomes so dry, you're thirsty. You, you, I'm like, the fasting becomes so hard for you. But here Jesus was in the wilderness, a land where it's dried. Dried. Nothing is there to remind you of any food. Nothing. You're just seeking God. You have to, your all your confidence is in God. You can never doubt the process. Everything is in you, is in God. And during this time in, in the desert, God has preserved him because he's going through 40 days, 40 nights. Nobody can just get up and do that without having the source the great source carrying them through and god was pres preserved him during that time he understood he was going through a period he cling to god more we have to stand and understand that we too have to go through the wilderness he was humbled he submitted to god and look at what the devil come up now he said but he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. This devil is so cunning. He said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Indeed, he is the Son of God. But does he need to say, If you are the Son of God? He's saying, If you are the Son of God. I mean, a lot of us will be so quick. To, to even want to turn stone into bread to prove into to prove to satan that we are the son of god no just as christ is the son of god so we too are the son of god the devil is coming to us and said are you truly a child of god if you are a child of god let these stones become bread jesus answered in such a perfect way he said it is written man shall not live by bread alone hallelujah so at that time jesus would have been hungry you finish a fast all you want is some food to eat and now he's saying turn, turn the stones into bread because you should have that power to turn the stones into bread because now you're hungry you need something to eat but jesus is not bothered with that it says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. So while we're feeding a physical body, we have to feed a spirit man the word. And that's why I said by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. So as a child of God, when you're going through that wilderness period, take the word of God. Feed yourself the word of God. Feed yourself the word of God. Live in the word. Read the word of God. Read the word. Live in the word of God. The devil yet is not finished. He said, Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angel charge over you, and if and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Now imagine, Jesus' word was perfect. He said, you shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The devil is so cunning now. He takes the word, the word of God he takes now and put it before Jesus and said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down because it is written, you sh he shall give his angel charge over you. My God, this is in Psalms 91. These words are in Psalms 91. The devil know the word of god and is quoted the word to jesus jesus said said to him it is written again you shall not tempt the lord your god no we must not tempt god hallelujah we have the word we are not gonna jump off a pinnacle and while we jump off the pinnacle we're gonna say god you said you shall give your angel charge over you so i'm jumping let your angel <laughs> cast me hallelujah wisdom 
we have to use wisdom in our situation hallelujah with this devil this devil is cunning against the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world and their glory and he said to him all these things i will give you if you will fall down and worship me then jesus said to him away with you satan for it is written you shall worship the lord your god and only him and only serve him Th then the angel then the devil left him and behold angels came and ministered to him this is indeed a message when you're in the wilderness period curse satan rebuke satan when you're in that wilderness period it is a time where the enemy comes in but we have to look to god it's a time where it's filled with drought in the desert you find scorpion you find fiery serpent there's no water hallelujah you're going through isolation right the land of the pits land of dry drought shadow of death so many things are coming your way as david read in psalm 63 what he was going through because he was going through this time oh dear in the wilderness period but knowing that he was not alone it was god who kept him through it all just as Jesus was in that wilderness. God was with him. But the devil had to prove. God had to prove. You. He has to test you. He has to trust you. Because so you trust God. And you believe in God. God also wants to believe in you. God also wants to be able to trust you. Are you going to choose the side of the devil? Are you going to choose the worldly standard are you going to choose to continue to live as the worldly and do if god deliver you from egypt will you be looking back that was one of the children of israel problem when moses took them away from egypt and when god test them in the wilderness to test their trust they kept on looking back to egypt and say in egypt we had this kind of food to eat in egypt we had this this and moses did all that god commanded him to do god was sending manna from heaven god allowed them to have water he gave them what the necessary things to keep them in the wilderness period but they could not trust god enough to really look only to him and because of that they spent excess time in the wilderness and god only brought out some into the land of the promise many of them died in that time in the wilderness now let's not die in that time while we're going through our wilderness period but let us come out of the wilderness into the promise that god has for us because after that wilderness period what is god giving us a land filled with milk and honey the land was there waiting for them not far away the promise was not far away after jesus um encountered this situation here with um with the devil jesus began his journey with this ministry hallelujah now maybe god want to send you out there to talk to some people and God wants to bring you through a wilderness period. Remember the wilderness period is not to destroy you. Moses spent 40 years in that wilderness tending to the sheep. God was teaching him how to take care of his people. Because when the task was given to Moses to watch over the children of Israel. It was not an easy task. The responsibility was great hallelujah remember moses did not see the promised land he had he did not go into the promised land god allowed him to see it, but he did not go in it because he is right 
was too much when he struck the the rock and did not give God the honor and the glory. But it, I believe all that frustration was because of how the children of Israel murmured, how oh, they complained, because the task was great for him. But indeed, Moses went on to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us be mindful of the task that God is crying carrying us through and god is bringing us to a place where we need to be at god is taking us there and while he's taking us there we're in that wilderness and while we're in that wilderness he's preparing us he took moses in that wilderness he prepared moses he prepared moses he prepared moses hallelujah he prepared moses by giving moses those sheep to tend to jesus now had to to go through his wilderness to come and and by that time jesus now start to become fishers of men and he go and found his disciples jesus went out healing people jesus went out doing what god had called him to be and to do hallelujah just as david was to become king david had to learn to take care of the sheep when the bear came god gave him the power over the bear when the lion came god gave him the power over the lion because of that he was able to trust god and god was able to trust him to destroy goliath after he destroyed goliath he ran away from saul because saul was jealous and saul knew david was had to become king and was going to become king so he Aunt the soul of David, but David ran into the wilderness. And while he was going through the wilderness, David fought many battles, and God sent men who he could trust to stand with him. David fought many battles, and before he fought those battles, he, he would always inquire of God, and God would always talk to him. God prepared him for that crown. When David became king, God had surely prepared him. I want to put this question out there to many of you. Saul failed in his kingship. Did Saul go through the preparation that David went through to be king? The people chose Saul to be king and God gave the people their choice. I did not see Saul go through any of these Things that David went through to become king. However, God gave Saul a brand new heart. A brand new heart. And he allowed him to, to prophesy. He allowed him to go amongst the sons of the prophet. But all the journey that David went through. Saul did not go through that. But David ran for his life over and over from Saul. And God truly blessed david to become king for israel up and now david name is so popular god loved david so much yes when david was king he faltered hallelujah many times but he was so quick to repent of his things he was so quick to call upon God because while David was going through the wilderness, David truly learned to trust God. And because even though the devil tempted David, even though the devil tried so hard after David, David truly did not bow. In the end, David fought so hard and purified himself. In, in the time David flesh became so dead that even when the Bible said when David was a old man, they found him a great damsel and they wanted to find out if if they, they um, gave him a damsel. And the Bible said David touched her not because David flesh was dead. God wants us to be so dead in our situation dead to this flesh that the spirit man can rise up to the task that god has given the spirit man to accomplish 
How do we become dead? It is during that time when we are going through our wilderness. We learn to trust God. We learn obedience. We learn God's laws and his commandments. We learn the word of God. We encounter God for ourselves. Our faith, our trust, our confidence is built in him. We learn to be humble. God give grace to the humble. We submit to God. He train us. He prunes us. He preserve us during that time of our wilderness period. And I want to use this message to encourage somebody. Don't worry about the time of the wilderness. Don't worry about that path. God is with you during that time. All you have to do is trust him. Obey him. Stick to what he says. And indeed, just like Moses came out of the wilderness, just as David overcome the wilderness, just as God overcame, just as Jesus, I'm sorry, just as Jesus overcame, so too God will give us that power to overcome. Let's continue to trust our Savior. Amen.